this week for a quick production tip and this week's tip is on creating a sense of movement throughout your entire track one of the keys to any kind of song and keeping the interest of the listener in your ear is the subtleties it's all in the details and by that what i mean is if you look at something like this is the drums that i have here i'm going to mute two of these parts the blue parts are the core so i've got this already grouped as drums i've got different effects routed uh, but this fundamentally we've got a kick another kick this is a backup kick snare uh rim shot hi-hat and some toms as you can see you know they're consolidated and then i've got them in special places where it's going to be breakdowns of course there and then outro but if i just played that they'd be fine it sounds good but it's not quite as interesting as having those little subtleties that show up little details that kind of grab your as you're listening to a song and every time you go back and listen to it you're listening for that you're listening for something different so there's two things that i will do automatically for almost every drum track the first one is i will always create a snare drum effect track and the snare drum effect track comes through my mixing board i've got six buses set up and on each bus uh, or sorry, aux end, I should say. On each aux end, there's a separate uh, piece of gear. So I'll have, I have like, I think, let me see, two or three reverbs. I've got a spring, like an old tube sp spring reverb. I've got a digital delay. I've got uh, the Benny Dub delay. I've got a Mooger Fuger, a Strymon, a Volante, and a Boss uh, digital reverb pedal, which I love. I think it's spectacular. I've been using it for probably 15 years now. It's never let me down and it's got the spring setting and the plate setting it's got a few of them but those are the two main ones i use and what i like about that is it allows me to manually go through the track and change things on the fly with different sounds so if you look throughout this whole track here you're going to see there's some different shapes volumes and effects so what it is if i go back and i play this i can go okay here's a little section Come over here. So all of those are done on the fly as the track is playing. And so what I'm trying to do is introduce little pieces of interest that fill in spaces that are not going on anywhere else in the track. So if there was like a horn solo, I'm not going to put as much in there. If there's more of a groove and you want to add a little interest and syncopation, then I'm going to add some echo and some reverb to make them stand out. So if I play this track now, it gets you a chance to hear what they sound like. like. So you can hear that it's subtle, but it's always there. And one of the other things I will do, because it is something that's dynamic and it changes and evolves, evolves throughout the track, I want people to notice it. So I have it panned basically at a uh, three o'clock position. So it's gonna be in your right ear and you're gonna notice it every time it hits, whether it's loud or subtle, it's always gonna be noticeable by your ear. It's gonna be perceived by your ear and what you're listening to. The second thing that I tend to do is up here. As you can see, this says added drum parts. This is exactly what that is. So I have a live drum set set up and mic'd at all times. And I'll play along with a track, something like this, which is kind of a hybrid between uh, produced sounds and live sounds and instrumentation. I'll add live drum sounds. So in here, I have crashes on the top of the chorus and bottom of the chorus. I have rides. I have snare drum rolls. So if I just quickly view a sample, I have this. <laughs> some rolls, some different things. And one of the things I will tend to do with this, unless it's blatantly obvious and just really sounds bad, is I will not quantize this or line it up. So if you listen to the ride symbols in context with the track, the drug track, it's not perfect, but that's what I want because it humanizes the track and gives you uh, a feel of somebody's actually playing this, which in this case I am on the ride. But the kick and the snare and the rim shots, they are locked down. They are not moving. There's no fluctuation. They're right on the beat as you want. So here's... <laughs> so 
so you can hear it. And overall, when you listen to it, it sounds like a full drum track. And one last thing, just like I did with the snare effects, where I have it panned right down here to 9 o'clock, I did the same for the added drum parts, except for it's more like a 10 o'clock. Where is it? There it is, 10 o'clock over here. I had moved it earlier, 10 o'clock. And it's panned to your left. So when you're listening to this track, you're going to hear on your left ear and your right ear some drums and some effects. So as you're listening to it, it always has something going on in your brain. Your brain is going to perceive these things. And what that does is create a sense of motion and movement throughout the track. So there's one little tip just for the drums on any track you do. I highly recommend trying to make some movement in there. And another way you can do that is through plugins. And I'll show you that in another uh, quick short production tip series. But that's it for today. Hope you get something out of this and I'll see you again next time.